All, All right. right. Jinx, where do you want to go? Let's, uh, let's go to a little rebuilding action. A little rebuilding, retooling. Uh, right. Let's... I got a little graphic tree tag. It's not us the same one I've been using, but we're going to put a little different spin on it, right? We got yeah. We got a team that we're trying to uh, rebuild. One team. We didn't draft it. It's this odd thing for me trying to rebuild. I don't know. I never tried to do that before, but we got this team. We inherited it. <laughs> never even had to rebuild one. We in it never rebuild. Only uh, reload, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have been... I don't know what our hit rate is, because I don't know how you target... I don't know how you calculate hit rate on rookies, but we have been slaying it over here for years. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've got some fantastic players on my team from rookie drafts, because we put in the work. Anyway. 70%? Rebuilding. Seven, nah, it's at least 76. <laughs> oh, man. Because the nerds be are 75. Easily so. 80 if carry on would have stayed healthy. I would go 81.24 percent hit rate on rookies mark it down those are straight facts mm. all right <laughs> can't tell a lie Just how could it you real. how could hit you? rate through the roof through the roof those are straight facts he made up a percentage those are facts but if you are new to the show or you haven't been uh listening for a long time and you need to rebuild we're gonna hit you with uh with what we've been thinking because we got this team right we we made some trades initially trying to make a push because we had a, we inherited like some good pieces and we traded some picks trying to trying to tool up and, and go for a push and it didn't work out and so we we're like all right you know let's we'll just blow this thing up like we probably should have done off the rip and we've been looking for good trades to try and get younger get more picks right yeah have a good time with it mm-hmm. yeah so i mean the odd thing so far in this process is the amount of teams that don't seemingly want wanna win. So to they're win. therefore you're cutting, you know, a percentage, whether it's in this case it's just about half of the league. Right. Right out from under you for basically a trade partner for anybody who, you know, if you're trying to rebuild, you're probably not selling any of your young assets. You're probably selling, you know, any of your middle aged to older assets, which we started this process a little bit last year selling DeAndre Hopkins, we ended up getting some firsts and some seconds, and uh, we sold Melvin Gordon in that deal. We got some firsts and some seconds, and we got Chubb back. Nick Chubb, we um, grabbed Damian Harris. Got Dam well, that was a different trade. Um, we got Paris Campbell um, and some other throw in there, and we haven't been able to. Those were all next year's like 2022 picks when we acquired them. We didn't get any picks in the draft last year. Gotcha. We had the uh, pick. We had the second pick overall. We took Trey Lance. Super we flex. earned the second pick overall and kept our own pick because we knew you we know, wanted a we quarterback. Were blowing it. We and, knew we wanted a quarterback, and we needed a second quarterback. So we we did draft Trey Lance in this league. Oh um, yeah. So really, what the problem now is is that. Uh, in this rebuilding thing is that you only have a certain amount of teams who are trying to win, who would be interested in these Nick Chubb like players. Like, I could see that being a problem for most people in their most leagues. Right. I don't think I look at our home leagues and a lot of our other leagues. There's not this many teams trying to rebuild at once. Like I right. feel like at least, you know, two or three guys are usually like, ah, fuck it. You know, got to tear it all down sometimes for a good reason. Sometimes because they're just that kind of guy didn't go right for a season. So I got to tear it down. Or they're just at the bottom and they don't know how to get up. Sure. But most people they're don't even re want to be real with themselves that they need to rebuild. Sure. So in a sense, I would give this league some of that credit. But on the other hand, it's it's so this is a league full of uh, other podcasts, the UDPL, and them boys have had a ton of turnover and they've kicked various people out and bring in other people and it's turn it's constantly turning over so when you get that much turnover That's it's not a very expensive league either it's like the cheapest league that i have can't get them boys to raise the entry price to save my every year like, anybody want to raise the price They're like no nah, i got 820 dollar league so i can't raise the price it's like <laughs> yeah. why don't you get rid of some of them shits and play for some real money maybe your advice would be better but but uh, <laughs> anyway shots fired just kidding shots Love fired you, uh so with you know when 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 a podcast league gets a new team, you just you want to rebuild, I guess. Nobody wants to win. Nobody's like that. Nobody's re feels like they're ready to win, and everybody's rebuilding. And it's like so we we were trying to make moves before the season started, knowing that you know when you're rebuilding, you want to trade away. You know we just sent Miles San we just sent uh, Manny Sanders out. Like I don't want my Manny Sanders in my lineup right now. I don't want yeah, him on my team if I'm trying to rebuild. Pick. He's getting me 20 points. Like I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Right? Not from a 32 year old wide receiver who's crushing. Can't have to get rid of him. Might even be older than 32. 
33. Yeah. And uh, I don't know where I was going with any of that, but. Well, I, I think the, you did, I think you gave a little backstory to 34. to make, Whew. geez, to make it make sense. I think that's why half the league is rebuilding because half the league is brand new in the last 24 months or less. So it's not their team, same as us. So I can see yeah. that's probably why I think most people's leagues, like you said, Casey, you won't have that much. So right. we, we had to like wait for some random teams to happen to have a winning record at this point and be like, oh, well, maybe I can actually make a push. So now we have some potential trade partners. Right. Because somebody's like, so oh, what are well, the trades? I, I do need to win. Well, so the, the I guess it's not necessarily the trades. I think it was just the idea that, all right, you're trying to make a move here and now you've kind of limited yourself to x amount of teams because we've you know we tried to move it in the off season wasn't working uh so you know you got to just sit tight you don't want to just go selling for pennies on the dollar but then you also when you get to this point need to then be real with yourself and say all right well when you hear this advice on a podcast you know let's just use the player that we're trying to sell nick chubb oh well he's worth you know you get this and this and this and this and this for him. Two and it's first like, plus. In, in reality, in a real league like this, especially with some people who probably, Hate for, better, for better or for worse, however you want to say it, probably have some sort of an ego attached to whatever deal they're making because they're pot fantasy analysts as well. All right. You know, it, it can get a little tricky and, and people might play it a little closer to the vest because nobody wants to get got. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. But so, people get got though in this league. So. Well, you know, I get got on fifty percent of my trades. Like that's, I mean, you're gonna, it's just it's going to happen. And they're the ones we're mad that you pulled off every time. <laughs> the ones, the ones everybody's upset about. Give it twenty four months, you'll be like, oh, I can't believe you did that. Like it just that's dynasty. If you're it's, gotta have good fantasy karma. I'm, it's you know, I'm I'm sad for those people who are scared to make trades because yeah. it takes that's half the fun of the action. Obviously, half the you know. The season That's is more fun. Than half the fun for you, the season is fun. Trying to win, you know, trying to win every week is fun. Chasing a championship is fun, but like wheeling and dealing with your team and changing out parts and making trades like that—that's half the fun for me. And it's if, so if if it's not half the fun for you and it's part of the fun for you, but you're not having any fun. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sad for those people that are so scared to lose a trade that make no trades. Right. Just go make a couple trades. You don't have to sell your best players if you're not used to it. Go, go. Tr- Offer up a third round pick for somebody's bad players, and let's see what happens. You right. know, let's just let's it's just good, get get your feet wet. It's a good point because every every week a fantasy show comes on, and you got you got to have buys and sells and holds, and it's like I mean, just you know maybe just hold on to the good players that you have, yeah, and and you know try to make some <laughs> try to make some other moves. You don't get try, you know it's not like a, every week is a fantasy show, right? Uh, you don't have to try to make something happen, but I agree, you should always be you know feeding the waters. Anyway, so. What we were kind of trying to do here, what what I started aiming for with the winning teams of with you know four and zero, oh, five and one. Or I don't even know what week we're at. Four, four and one, one, five and zero, oh, mm-hmm. three and two. Any 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 team that kind of fell into there, or a team that had a decent amount of points and was sitting at like a two and three record, you know, started testing the waters. And basically, the way I viewed it was at this point was let let's go target players who weren't necessarily in those winning rosters starting lineups. So that way you're not taking anybody out of their lineup necessarily mm-hmm. and still giving them a good player while you're trying to get picks back plus, you know, gaining other players. So like for instance, like, you know, maybe a Chase Claypool isn't in your line. Like this week he crushed it. So next week he'll probably be in your lineup. But right, like, right. It was it was I left him out of one of my lineups because I didn't know if he was going to play or not. He had a questionable. They right. say he was coming back and he crushed it. And he's the best game of the year. Juju he's and Deontay's back. Uh, yeah, so he's been a t- he's been a tough guy to say that. Yeah, you definitely got to play him every single week because the Steelers' offense has been yep. like this. He's kind of different than Juju and Deontay, which are you know maybe a little more suited for what's going on in that offense potentially currently, um, or like a Javante Williams who's not really in anybody's dynasty lineup right now, but. I want Javante Williams if I could get a hold of him. I'm sure. trying to rebuild, so I'm going to get a, a young running back. You know, I'm not saying you're just going after those guys. I'm trying to get those guys and a first round pick. Mm-hmm. Trying to build a package. J.K. You know, Dobbins on the IR. Exactly. Well, that's the next step. Then, then now you move to outside of guys like Claypool, who and other guys who are considered as possible studs with a lot of pizzazz to them, like the Javantes and that guy. Now you go. Now you switch to Trey Lance. Now you switch to. 
J.K. Dobbins, mm -hmm. Clyde. I guess if you feel good about Cam Akers and his injury, Cam Akers, Travis Etienne, Clyde Edwards-Alaire just Saquon went down with an injury. Hurt. Saquon. Saquon. We have Saquon, so couldn't trade for him. But the Clyde Edwards-Alaire guy is a four and one team, so I sent him an offer. You know, Perfect. hey, Clyde just went down. You're four and one. Yep. Probably Boom. weren't loving using Clyde anyway. Plug Nick Chubb. Here in. comes Chubb. You can get Chubb. Let me get Clyde and a, and a first round pick and, yep. you know, see if we can figure something out. So, yep. you know, just kind of struck me as something to talk about and kind of bring up on here. Like just the strategy that I was viewing this at and the, the amount of time we had spent kind of just going over through this of trying to figure out a way to sell a guy like Chubb who is kind of at the young end of the Dalvins, the Aaron Joneses, the Zeke's, the Kamara's. He's like a year younger than those guys, but feels just as old. And everybody seems to kind of be, he was, when we did the startup drafts, like he was kind of like in no man's land when you were starting up and people were seemingly already kind of scared of him this year. Yeah. You know, so Another year of Nick Chubb, yeah. still only being 26. You know, you went from maybe getting two firsts to only getting one first for Nick Chubb because you can't get any. Like, and at the end of the day, it's what the market will bear in the league. You can either keep going with Nick Chubb on your roster or you can, you know, try to figure out what the market will bear for him and be like, all right, well, that's not what the fantasy uh, mm -hmm. pros say you can get for Nick Chubb. But th th I can either take this, get a. A first in J.K. Dobbins, or I can, you know, get nothing, get and nothing, couple, yeah. and, and put keep having to put Chubb in my goddamn starting lineup, which I don't want to do anyway. Messing up your draft pick, right? Exactly. So we did end up moving Chubb in this league for J.K. Dobbins, a first, and uh, Jeffrey Wilson, and a third, and and we got a third as well. Nice. And we gave up. We gave up uh, Alex Collins. Mm -hmm. Chubb and, throwing. and Manny Sanders. I like Which, it. I didn't want to, like, so basically that breaks down to, like, I could just take Alex Collins out of that. That was just something mm -hmm. fun to throw, and we don't want to have to plug him this week and get some points from him. So, <laughs> uh, you know, first in a, in a, and JK for Chubb, I think that's a fairly fair deal. You might be losing a little bit with Chubb. JK Dobbins could have easily been taken before Nick Chubb in, in a startup this year. If he was starting, he you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't even be able to make that trade. If you wouldn't be able Dobbins to get him straight up. You know, you probably wouldn't be able to trade Chubb for JK mm -hmm. if he was starting. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like that. And then, you know, Alex Collins and Manny Sanders was probably too much to pay for a third and Jeffrey Wilson. But having Manny off the roster it is going to make our picks better. So that's got to weigh in. Like, right. get that. Again, uh, though, with the Manny Sanders throw in at this point it with, over. with Manny Sanders. Nobody's going to give you a two for the 34-year-old. Probably not, but maybe does, 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 did he say yes to the deal before he had Emmanuel Sanders? No. no. Right. So now he's so got Emmanuel exactly. Sanders it over so this is, to this plug is, him in. This is, I don't want to get, I, I, again, I think the value on Manny Sanders is a little better than what I was giving up right there, but I can either keep spending my time trying to get like a two, three swap for Manny Sanders with a bunch of guys and haggle with them for, and spend a, or I can use Manny Sanders with what he's probably best to be used for on a team like that and have him in, in the kicker of a trade to put him over the top. Cause he ain't doing shit for me anyway. Mm -hmm. He was basically a dead asset coming into the year until mm -hmm. he went to the bills and has been crushing. Told Nobody want anything to do with him. I love that. Um, and you know, so that was that when somebody who's trying to win, and now they get Chubb in their lineup for not getting rid of another starting player. And right. on top of that, you get to plug in Manny Sanders in a start three wide receiver league. You know, I, you know, I, that's how you do it. Starting folks. three wide receivers. You, you know, that's, that's the, the Manny Sanders kicker was just that's Dallas the, Collins just happened to, he's been on the team forever and just happened to just sure. float into a spot. And I was like, fuck it. I mean, I might as well just well, throw you, him in there too. You went from a 26 year old beast running back to a 23 year old beast running back. Potentially. Um, well, JK's a beast. He had the Potentially. best. Potentially. I mean, what? he is, but he, 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 he hadn't put what Chubb, I mean, he's not Chubb on he's the field Nick yet. He's not Chubb, but I mean, yet. still. I and he is, does have an ACL injury now, which Chubb had a pretty devastating still injury like one in of the best per touch type running backs last year. And before he got hurt this year, he's already, you know, he was going to be a beast. I mean, they won't throw it to yeah. him, so that's so, kind and of then, a bummer. But again, Chubb can't get a pass either. Again, we got a third in that deal, which potentially could be a bad, you know, a bad team's third. So maybe a high third in 20, that was a 2023. And we got, we got Jeff Wilson in the deal, who... You know, might be a stud in five weeks. You, 
he's not that old. He's a lot younger than I thought he was. Trade him in five weeks when he's well, back. That, that was the thought. Hey, we'll get Jeff Wilson. He comes back. The Niners seem uncertain about who they want to be in that backfield. It ain't Sermon. It's not Sermon. And they do seem to like Elijah Mitchell a good bit. But, you know, Jeff Wilson has some cachet with, with old Shanny there. He comes – maybe he doesn't come back at all this year. You know, who mm-hmm. knows. But I felt, felt like it was a good, again, well, maybe player they- on IR right now. Mm-hmm. Not doing anything for your lineup. Good throw in for us. Let me Let me go ahead and try to snag him. Worst case scenario, I'm potentially maybe playing him next year when the Niners have another injury at running back. Yeah. Best case scenario, maybe I can get a two or a three for somebody who's trying to make a playoff push. If he gets back this year before the trade deadline, then maybe you can get something for him. If not, maybe he plays well enough to carry some value into the offseason and then you can trade him in or ride him. 